What is up? What is up, my gorgeous Facebook family? How is everybody going today? You're here with Kylie Pax, Australia's emotional eating coach, and you know how we do. I'm here to empower you to take control of your relationship with food, create a body and a life that is more delicious than chocolate because you get to do it all on your terms. If you're joining me here live, you know how it rolls. Throw me an emoji in the comments box. Let me know that you're here. And to all my replay watchers, sending you so much love and gratitude. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you to everybody who's here live. Throw me some emojis. Throw me a like and a love. Let me know that you've dropped on because today I will be very honest with you. I did not know what we were going to talk about and I'm still not entirely sure, but I know I am so over with us making the excuses, excuses, excuses and putting off and delaying our own joy and happiness time and time again. Michelle, Elizabeth, how are you going? It's so great to see you here. Thank you so much for the likes and the loves. I am telling you, we spin these fantastical stories and we rip ourselves off from our happiness every single day. And sometimes it weasels your way into your life real small and we don't see it. We don't identify it. And to much later when we feel uncomfortable and we can't figure out what is going on thank you so much happy hump day michelle happy hump day to you too annie how are you going i saw you sent me a message i'm gonna have a look shortly i'm gonna have a look but um tell me tell me who is with me in is just so over feeding themselves pathetic excuses because here is how it rolls if I dished up a meal to you that was really gross and you did not like it and you were, had to force feed yourself, that would just make you sick, right? It would make you sick. But we do this to ourselves every single day. We feed ourselves pathetic excuses and they make us sick on an internal level. I can't do that now. I'm too busy. I'm going to get to that later because I've got to attend to all this other stuff. The things that really matter... The things that really matter to us, like taking care of ourselves on any kind of level, uh, being kind to ourselves, showing ourselves some kindness, making any kind of time in our busy, busy schedule for us. No, no, that all gets pushed to the side. And why do you think we come home at the end of the night and stuff our face with food? Because we have been cruel to ourselves all day, all day. We... Listen, we work ourselves like we're in some kind of sweatshop of our own device, right? We make this thing up ourselves. We feel like if I work myself to the bone and just about kill myself to achieve, I'm going to be a worthwhile human being. But meanwhile, you're suffering. You come home at night and some of us don't even get to wait till nighttime because we are so freaked out by the schedules we've created for ourselves. We are stuffing our face with food just to make it through the day. And then you come home, then you come home and you're like, hideous day, awful day, so stressful. I have not got my eating right during the day anyway. So just, you know, give me the food, whatever, whatever is going. We are like, while we're ordering the takeaway, we're already putting toast in the toaster and slabbing. I used to say, right, I used to say, I didn't have toast with my, I didn't have butter with my toast. I had toast with my butter. I would hack off slabs of butter that was so thick. I actually used to wonder, I wonder if you can die from a heart attack from eating this much butter. It didn't stop me. Oh, no, no, it did not stop me. I would stuff my face because I was so desperate for some pleasure in my life because I had not allowed myself any pleasure during the day. It was all about bust a move, achieve, do more, be more, look like you're fantastic in the eyes of the world and then come home and collapse when I felt like I can be the real me now the real me. So we take off the mask when we come home and we can put on, like you hear me say, put on your tracky tacks and that's when you feel like, whew, I can exhale, I can be me. What if you could be you all day and that was okay because you didn't care about what other people thought, you were cool with being you. What would happen then? Shock. Who knows? Certainly the world would not stop spinning on its axis, I can assure you. Everything would be fine. And the icing on that chocolate cake is that you would be a whole lot happier as well. Less stressed, more and more in alignment with yourself, happier to be around, for more fun to be around, let's be real. When we're trying to be something that we're not and we're ripping ourselves off in different areas of our life, we're not happy. No, we're not. <laughs> so I want to thank you to everybody who's here. Sandy, Dana, Shelby, how are you going? It's so great to see you all here. Jenna, how are you going, honey? Ashley, James, it's so great to have you all here. This is the deal today. And I said this week, when I started the week, this has been a little bit of a fuzzy week for me. I've never really known every day when I've jumped on here. I thought, I wonder what the topic's going to be today. Pfft, let's see what comes out. And when we started this week, I thought, yeah, this week is about authenticity, 
authenticity, being up, being you, stepping up and knowing that it's okay. The only person that has to be okay with is you, for you to be you. Who else are you going to be? Who the heck else do we think we're going to be if we're not going to be ourselves? If we decide at some point in our lives, we've just decided, made it up in our heads that we, who we are, is not acceptable not. We measure it up against other people. We fantasize how they must be and that their life is perfect. And then we look at ourselves and we go imperfect, not good enough. Therefore, we don't stop there. No, no, we don't stop. We don't discover, dig deeper, decide that there is something fantastic about us. No, we don't. No, we decide to become someone else. We spend our whole lives slogging it out, striving to be someone nobody ever asked you to be. Mm. We spend our lives trying to be someone nobody ever asked you to be. It is time, guys, it is time for us to step up, open the doors of our heart and our life and go, you know what, this, this is what you're getting. This is what you're getting. Does not mean that you have to walk out into the universe and be rude or mouth off to people and just say, well, this is me. This is how I am. No, no. Manners are always, you know, a very good uh, trait to, to um, have. I'm not talking about being, you know, rude or vulgar or not kind or not giving and not receptive. I'm simply talking about being okay with who you are on the inside and on the outside. We're here to learn and grow, right? So you're not supposed to like come here in one fashion and stay that way forever. You're going to grow. You're going to expand. You're going to become more and more incredible and amazing as you travel your journey. Of course you will, but you're going to make it so much harder on yourself if you use food as a coping mechanism. If food is the only joy that you have because you're spending all your time trying to pretend that you're somebody that you're not, trying to be cool and look cool around everybody else. If you can't even sit down at the lunch table with your work colleagues and be okay, like <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other day, absolutely beautiful friend of mine, and she had to go to lunch with her work colleagues and she had what she referred to, because I just love this girl so much, a squidgy sandwich, squidgy. Everybody else was with their cool food. Everybody else had the cool food. They had their like quinoa and roasted pumpkin salad, you know, pine nuts and, um, you know, wholemeal um, svelte pasta, svelte, spelt pasta. And I'm sure it made them svelte. <laughs> they had the cool food. She had a big squidgy sandwich and she was really embarrassed. And she was like, oh my God. She felt like the nerd in the group. But like I said to her, what if it was okay? What if you and your squidgy sandwich were just fine? She said, I felt like everybody was looking at me. I'm there, let me tell you something, nobody's looking at you. They're all eating their own food. We create the stories in our head, decide the entire world is judging us and therefore we better not be who we are. We better not be who we are. And she said she could not even enjoy her meal. She couldn't because she spent the whole time trying to be like, am I, am I laughing at the right time? Am I saying the right things? What if my sandwich, you know, and all the stuff, the squidgy stuff is dropping out and OMG. And it's like, we just need to chill. If you want to eat a squidgy sandwich, eat your squidgy sandwich. It doesn't matter what other people say or think. It does not matter. You hear me say this all the time. The only person who has to be cool with you is you. The only person who has to be okay with the way you look is you. It doesn't mean you've got to stay how you are. If you're not happy or comfortable in the body that you're in, of course you can change it. Of course you can. But resisting, resisting, resisting yourself resisting yourself. How is that helpful to you or anybody else in your life? How is that helpful? Is that a kind thing to do to wake up every day and just look in the mirror, decide that you are completely unacceptable and you must put on the mask of acceptability, be someone that you're not, smile when you don't want to. So, I mean, I'm not talking about walking around being a miserable, you know, sod. I'm certainly not saying anything like that. But you don't have to hide your emotions. You don't have to be fake and phony is what I'm talking about. You don't have to be fake and phony. People can see it a mile away. I would rather tell somebody I'm not feeling so hot today. So, you know, don't expect me to come out with the super enthusiasm because I'm just feeling a little bleh. At least you voice it. At least you can be like, well, this is how I'm feeling at the moment. This is the drill, you know, so I'm just going to chill a little bit. doesn't mean you need to spread your misery everywhere. But it's okay to be you. It's okay to be you. I, wanted, I want you to know that 
And thank you to <laughs> thank you so much to everybody who's dropping on here live. Yeah, Shelby says hi, Kylie. Love your top. Ha <laughs> ha. So pretty. Thank you. Yeah, this is so true. I've done this so many times with food. It's like you always say that we can't sprinkle our food with magical pixie dust. Is what I say. Yeah, with fairy dust for both good and bad. That's right. That is right. You hear me say it all the time. And yes, Shelby's nailed it. Sarah, how are you going? It's so great to see you here. Yeah, this is what we do. We have this um, this sort of situation where we're living our lives as somebody who we think the world wants us to be. Who knows who that is? But it's not you. You're not being authentically you. So you're not comfortable. You're never really comfortable. There's always something irking at you. And when I say irking, it usually appears in the form of exhaustion. Because you get home, you're really drained. You're tired from living in a way that you know, you're tired from pretending to be someone no one ever asked you to be. And so we sprinkle food with magical pixie dust, as Shelby's saying here, and we eat for some kind of relief, comfort. It's like, it's like we are, can finally exhale. When we get home in the, you know, confines of our own little four walls, we're like, whoo, I can be me now. I can be me. No prying eyes coming at me, judging me every second of the day. Do you walk around? Do you walk down the street and just be judging? Maybe we do. Maybe we do. We do. But it's not going to impact anybody. Other people's judgment does not impact you. Firstly, because most of the time you don't know it. They don't tell you. Would it matter how perfect you are? Tell me. The most perfect sort of model, actress or whatever, the most perfect people, they still get picked apart and torn to shreds and probably more so. Probably more so than the average person on the street. So there is nothing you can do. We're trying to run and escape this imaginary judgment that we think is out there. Well, if it's out there, you can't escape it anyway. Doesn't matter how perfect you look, doesn't matter how perfect you act. And I can tell you, I've said this story before. I, when I used to work in the corporate industry, I used to put on the fake persona. I had masks, different masks for different people, depended on who I was with. I would pretend to be who I thought they wanted me to be. So certain situations, I'd be very vivacious, even though that wasn't me at the time. I was so shy, so shy, so shy it hurt, right? But I would pretend to be a little more outgoing, but it was just so inauthentic, it looked ridiculous. Um, most of the time, most of the time, 99.99 to infinity percent of the time, I just conformed to what I thought everybody wanted me to be. And I came home at night and I ate and I ate and I ate because I just put on my stretchy like Nike pants at that point. I would come home and just go, give me the chips because every day was exhausting. Try, I, it was like my whole life was a movie and I was like the Hollywood actor pretending to play a role. Only I was not getting paid for the part. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So what I'm asking you today is how much longer are you going to put up with your pathetic excuses? It is time for you to just step up and go, you know what world? Boom. Here I am. You landed me here. Now you're going to have to live with me. You're going to have to deal with me while I work my way through this journey without using chocolate cake as a, like a band-aid for every situation. Pizza, cookies, cake, chips, ice cream. You hear me say it all the time. Ripping ourselves off from being who we are, that hurts. That is not a fun way to live. That is not a fun way to live. And listen, we're scared of other people. Like, like when we were kids, we were scared of the boogeyman. Nobody, there are no parents now to come and assure you that the boogeyman is not real. So I'm going to tell you, you don't need to be scared of other people. They're not the boogeyman. They're exactly the same as you. They're on the same level. They have the same components as you. We're all made of the same stuff. Nothing is so wildly different that you need to be some freak that everybody needs to stare at and you need to hide and be ashamed of who you are. We are all the same. We're all the same. Not only are we all the same on the outside, we're all the same on the inside. Do you think that the rest of the world is running around with no insecurities and you're the only one? No, they've got just as many insecurities as you, only you're so obsessed with your own. Like I'm spitting. You're so obsessed with your own that we don't think about anybody else. We don't consider for a fact that they're just as insecure as we are because we're just so caught up in our own insecurity that we, we stop doing the things that would make our hearts sing. And we don't step up and do the things that we're afraid to do. We don't grow. We shrink back instead of moving forward. So here's the message that I want to share with you today. Nothing grows in your comfort zone. Nothing. Nothing grows in your comfort zone. You want to come at your life from a place of asking yourself one simple question every day. What would it need to look like to feel amazing? 
what would it need to look like to feel amazing? And then when that answer comes to you, do that thing, do that thing. And that might be wearing a certain outfit that you feel like, oh, better not, you know, the pants are a bit tight and what if somebody says something about them? Who cares? Who cares what somebody says if you wear some tight pants and maybe you don't have, you know, the body of a Victoria's Secret model? Who cares? If they make you feel good, you wear them. If there's something you want to do and makes you feel good, you do it. You want to sing a song, you want to write a book, you want to, you know, do a play, do it. Do it. What would it need to look like to feel amazing? And that is the thing that's going to make your heart sing. Step forward with that. The moment that you fulfill your life with your true goals, dreams and heart's desires, you don't need food anymore. It's not going to be your only source of happiness because now you're living your life from an authentic place. You're true to yourself. You're in integrity. You're in alignment. That's when you know you've got what it takes. So I want to thank you so much. I accept your butt. I know exceptions, but we're going to talk in a second. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much to everybody who's been here live. And um, if I haven't seen you drop on and I haven't mentioned your name, please do forgive me. I can see so many of you here, but I know sometimes Facebook hides a few of you. So I want to thank you so, so much. Please do remember, um, I'll just mention it very quickly, although I was not going to. There's still a couple of places there for the four-day transformation personal power lockdown right here on the Gold Coast in Australia that's happening in November. You can find the details on any of the previous live, um, live streams from the last few days and last week. Can skip on over and find that um, but mainly I really want you to sort of get today if you found this message helpful if this has empowered you and um, enlightened you in any way please do go ahead and share because you know how I roll every time you step up and you empower yourself to be all that you are then you give someone else permission to do the same so you see my message behind me the empowerment message please do go ahead like love and share because as you give yourself permission to be the owner of your own life you change the world and give someone else permission to do the same. I want to thank you so, so much. Chrissy, how are you going? Thank you to everybody, Zoe. Thank you, Sue. It's so great to have you all here. Please do, if you've just dropped on live now, oh, go back. Once we finish, wrap it up. Go back and watch the replay because today we're talking about living authentically. It's been the theme of the week and the way that we rip ourselves off with our pathetic excuses. And it's just time for us to step up and go, really, enough is enough. Enough is enough. <laughs> so Linda, thank you so much. I know you've only just dropped on. Feel free to go back and watch the replay because we are, it was a bit of a midweek smackdown. It was a midweek smackdown. But sometimes we need it, right? Sometimes we need it. It's like I said, we're not little children anymore. We don't have someone to come on in and go, hello, wake up. That's not the right way to go. So I'll just take it upon myself to do it. <laughs> I want to thank you so much to everyone who's joined me here today because you know the drill. The only person who really does have the power to change your life is you. But if you're pretending to be someone else, someone that no one ever asked you to be, you're powerless. You render yourself powerless when you step up and you step into your own power. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you so much. When you do that, you know the drill. That's when you really do have what it takes. Sending you big love. I'm going to see you all tomorrow. Until then, bye for now.